Hey, good morning, uh, Captain Ron here. Uh, in the back seat of MTO Sport 2017, uh, got a got a young pilot up front. Tyler, you all set up front, Tyler? Yes, sir. Okay, Tyler's got about 11 hours, and he's doing real good. Uh, well, today, this morning, we're going to do some uh, simulated emergency landings and talk you through it and the pros and cons and things what to do and what not to do so uh, we're all ready we're at the whole short line and we're ready to line up and wait start our takeoff Cersei traffic uh, yellow gyro plane lining up wait runway one nine Cersei. got a pretty good wind coming down the runway out of the south the more wind you have in your face the shorter the takeoff uh, density altitude's pretty heavy today, which will affect our performance somewhat. Uh, when we get out on the center line of the runway, Tyler will go through the check takeoff procedure. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, ready. we're positioned on center line of runway. Holding wheel brakes, hold cyclic full forward and centered. Flip it to flight. Hit that engine RPM right on that green line. All right, and start pre-rotation. Now, if you get too much RPM to start the pre-rotation, you have a clutch light. You'll get a solid light. The main thing is just to don't advance the throttle. If you don't have enough throttle when you pre-rot start your pre-rotate, you'll get a blinking. Uh, white clutch light. We're looking good. Rolling in some throttle. Get it up to that yellow huh? Come off. Three, two, one. Hey, looking good. Yeah, staying on that center line. That's great. Speed and then we'll climb out at six zero sixty. Seriously, traffic yellow airplane climbing out one nine, staying in the pattern. Seriously. Everything instruments look good up there. Yep, oil pressure's green. Oil temps getting in the green. Water temps good. Cruising sixty. Feels like we're climbing real good. Yep. About 300, 320 feet a minute. Yeah, the first uh, simulated emergency landing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to initiate it on a downwind. So you'll have to do a left base and final, but uh, we'll talk about that when we get there. Yeah, it looks clear out here. I don't see any other traffic. Surface traffic, helicopter 94 Whiskey Charlie. Uh, departing midfield departure from Alpha, departing to the south, and I'll be departing the pattern to the north. Uh, all the switches up? Yep, all switches up. Okay, we'll stay close to the runway. Oh. I got the helicopter inside. He's coming our direction on the taxiway. Hey, okay, good deal. We're Cersei Traffic, yellow job plane. We're left downwind. We're going to simulate a emergency landing on 1930. Uh, we'll get to 1,000 feet and we'll level off. Uh, you got to remember, job planes don't, don't glide very far. They're about a 4 to 1 ratio. So uh, the benefit to that is, you know, you land at a, you touch down at a short area at a very low ground speed. So that's that's the trade-off you get compared to our airplane. Okay, we're leveling off, throttling back. Throttle back. 
All right, now I'll take control of the throttle. Now you, you got, got it. it the, the, you got the other controls. You want to scan the skies, make sure there's no traffic in our way. Yep. Uh, right. See nothing. And the main thing we want to uh, be concerned with: once I throttle back, you count to three. A little bit to the right. You count to three before you you make any control movements. Turkey traffic, airplane uh, simulated emergency landing for one nine. All right, I'm going to throttle back to. And you, 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 you want to make sure you get to the runway. You don't have to square off your turns. And I'm back to about 20, about 2,200 RPM, keeping our airspeed to 60 or 60 plus even. You can always bleed that extra airspeed off when you get down close to the surface. Looking good. Usually these are the best landings you make. Stay right on the left side of this runway. You don't want to land in a turn. And that's it. Lead the speed off, bring the nose up. There you go. Oh, it's kind of bumpy. All right, let's bring it back out on the center. Here we go again. We need all the throttle today because of the density altitude. And the nose is off, looking good. Always scan the skies for aircraft. Aircraft, birds. You always look forward. Sometimes people use the opposite runway. Now, if the engine fails at this point, you only land straight ahead or left or right. You don't do a 180 and go back. You got to have at least 500 feet above you, above the ground, between you and the ground, to do a 180 turn to land. And if there's a strong headwind, you don't even want to do that because that just makes you, you're going to land, your ground speed's going to be excessive because you'll have a tailwind when you're landing. So try to keep those factors in mind. Uh, you got anything to add to the conversation, Tyler? Uh, no, just uh, trying to keep my airspeed up whenever we're going down. Yep. Got a little squirrely on the land in there. There's traffic, helicopter 811, Sierra Fox Drive 10 north, 1,500 inbound for a heated house, 3 northeast airfield. This time we're going to... We'll do our base to final, and we'll do our and power. Turkey Travel, this helicopter down to Wish Charlie, four miles northeast of the field, 1,200, transitioning through to the west. We'll do a power up. We'll do a power up, survival flight helicopter. We'll do a power up uh, simulated emergency landing on final. Okay. And we'll, we'll show you how to step it down. Because, you know, if you're a thousand feet or higher, generally you're going to land pretty much uh, just off the nose. So you don't try to choose some, some place further than that for a landing. And if you're too high, we're going to show you how to lose altitude. Alright, we'll come around on uh, base to final. Thirsty traffic. Yellow jar plane. Close in left base. Short final for runway 19. Simulated. Emergency landing. Okay, we'll keep the nose up. Pull the nose cyclic back a little. And you can, we're going to do a little stepping. You know, a little vertical and then lower the nose and step it down to lose altitude without gaining a lot of forward. 
Okay, now we want to bring the nose up, bring it up, slow it down, slow it down, bring the nose up some more, slow it down and we'll lose some altitude. We got, we got the throttle back to, to idle, zero thrust, that's what we want on the prop. Then nose it down a little bit, pick your airspeed up, but you can do that, you know, as much as you need depending on your altitude. That way you can control your, your place where you're going to land. Get some speed up. We want 60 now. There we go. Good deal. Looking good. Keep keep the speed up. Right down here. Let it bleed off. And then bring the nose up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. Good traffic. Bring that was up. after one one Sierra Foxtrot five north. All right, you can shut that off. Now. Land. We're gonna try another simulated emergency landing. We're at altitude. Let's hold our altitude. There's some traffic, a uh, yellow ground plane. We're going to be doing a simulated emergency landing from a left downwind for a one nine. There's some traffic. Alright, I don't see anybody in the area. I don't hear anybody. Now, if you've got a crosswind, like a headwind on base, that's going to that's gonna, uh, diminish your forward movement to get to the runway. Let's, let's, let's give a little bit of right. I got the throttle at this point. Alright. Alright. Okay, I'm going to throttle back. All the way back to 2200. Now, it, it's important not to get too much throttle. If you get too little... Cedar Springs traffic, Cherokee 7164 Whiskey, 3 miles out from the northwest. Going to be doing a midfield flyover, setting up for left downwind for runway 24. Cedar Springs okay. traffic. Okay. If you get too little throttle, the, the propeller drag is going to diminish your abilities to get to your point of landing. Now, at this point, we're, we're going to have to add throttle because we're going to be landing in a turn. Uh, we're going to have to abort that and add throttle. Okay, let's fly the runway. Get down close, center line, and we'll land at the far end and taxi back. Close to the center line, you can relate what the aircraft is doing much easier as far as the yaw, right, left, that type of thing. Right. Doing that. And we got drift. You know, you can control drift left or right with a cyclone. All right, we'll keep our speed up. Looking good. Nobody's coming in on the opposite direction. Now landing from this point, you want to just throttle back a little bit, keep reducing the throttle, throttling back some more, and let the aircraft settle. You can't poke the nose down, you don't have the height, altitude, and let it settle in. You're going to be coming in on the backside of the power curve. Up, 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 good. All right, now we come to a slow stop using the half cyclic. All right, now what next? Uh, flip it to brake. Okay. What next? Pull forward. Get the rotor head even with the wind so you don't have that drag force. Okay. And slow taxi to hold shoreline. Yeah, just let me know what you're doing. All right. And as we make that turn, I'm going to add a little bit of right to put the rotor head into the wind. Right cyclic. Right cyclic into the wind. As we come here, I'm starting to starting to pump up the brake. Blow the rotors down. Since we got that little bit of crosswind, it's going to bump a little bit, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's the bump right there. All right. Pumping it up. Pump up. And where would you like the rotor blades to stop? Uh, 
12 and 6. So right here, full forward, push on the front, get that front brake going. There okay, we go. Okay, good deal. All right. right. Kind of give me an idea what you think about those uh, simulated emergency landing. Uh, they're definitely something that I'm glad we're practicing because it's a, a feeling that I like to know. Uh, Let's I think taxi. we can taxi All right. Uh, I think I think what I need to work on is uh, hitting, not landing in a corner like that. Uh, trying to get the feel for the airspeed as we're pitching down to keep our airspeed instead of looking at the gauge. Yeah. Yeah. But also nose up is crucial. Having that more nose up is uh, what I've been trying to work on. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll taxi back and we'll do another takeoff. All right. But I just wanted to use this time just to discuss what we've been through and what your what your suggestions are, you know. So now say, so whenever we stair stepped, what what is the speed into when you think it's good to drop a nose? Because at one point we were doing thirty, and that's about when you when I felt you start pushing the nose down. Is that about? Because I know you don't want to go too slow. Yeah, uh, yeah, thirty to forty is good. About when you start feeling it mushing down too much. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I know that the slower you go, the more drag you're going to induce, correct? That it's just your forward momentum is just going to slow even more? Yeah, and the more, and the rate of descent's going to increase to the point where, you know, you want to make sure you, you leave enough altitude safety factor beneath, between you and the ground. Okay. So you can gain, tra what they call it is trading off the altitude for airspeed. Okay. And you just... Coming out of what well, we came out of right under a thousand foot when we did that, and we dropped in to just about 400, and then use that to kind of slow us down and use that or speed us up. Is that about average for? I guess it depends on your altitude when your engine goes out. Yeah. How you react? Yes, and okay. hopefully you'd be above a thousand feet uh, when that happens. Uh, you, you really don't want to fly lower than a thousand feet uh, over over terrain that you really can't land on. Okay. Uh, so. But I say if we were coming in and we were keeping our airspeed down or airspeed up coming down and about right before the initial flare we have an engine out. It'd be the same factor as just it just bleed off let it settle and let it bleed off and just hit as best you could? Yes. Okay. Yeah. In reality you know when you have a, a, a real emergency landing it's totally different I mean, the terrain's different, the winds are different, uh, and the engine completely stops, and that's... And your that's thought process, you, most, especially for me, a new pilot, if, if I was flying by myself, or even, I guess, even with you, um, if I had an engine out, I wouldn't have a checklist anymore. I would just react. That's correct. You don't, you don't try the fuel pump. I mean, if you've got 2,000 feet, you, you might have some time to do that, but the gyroplane, you know, it loses altitude quick. Yeah, and you can feel that drag. Every time you throttle back, you can feel it, and that's why I'm glad that we're practicing. I think that it's good to practice safely, but it's the feeling that drag is definitely a different feeling. Yeah. Okay, well, we appreciate you watching the video, and uh, hopefully you can learn something from it. Thanks again.